come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Evil exists. We all agree on that, don't we? I mean, we read about it, hear of it, sometimes witness it. Even if we are that unfortunate, have it done to ourselves. But what is it? The dictionary defines evil as anything impairing happiness or welfare, or depriving of good. If we accept, at least for now, this definition, then who of us, in the course of a lifetime, has not done evil, or darkly thought of doing it? I'm waiting. Who? Anyone can do it. I can't. Don't be silly. Of course you can. But how? First, you have to believe you can do it. And then? Then? Why, then you go ahead and do it. Our mystery drama, The Evil Eye, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Mandel Kramer and Carol Titel. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I intimated at the start that this is to be a story of evil. And before long, you will realize that I did not exaggerate. Cheating, lying, stealing, such things are commonplace. We read about them daily. Then there is betrayal, slander, perjury. Oh, the number is endless. And what is worse, all lurk in every human heart. Listen to the words of Blaise Pascal, who lived and wrote more than 300 years ago. Evil is easy and has infinite forms. It's a terrible thing, being a woman. The only thing that's worse is being a successful woman. You've heard of me, I'm sure. Charity Ormsby. You've certainly read one of my books. More likely, you've read them all. I'm the best-known female writer in the country. Of course, few know that my real name is Louise Bates. Married nearly 20 years to John Bates, mother of two, both boys, both, thank the Lord, away at school. At any rate, when the events I'm about to relate came about, there was no one in the house but John and myself. Louise? Louise? It's me. Hmm? John? All right to come in? Oh, yes. Come in. Come in. Good morning, dear. Oh, I've waked up to better ones. Brought you some coffee. Mm. What time is it? It's a little early, but I have to get to the office. You know, income tax time is Mm. coming up. Everybody wants their returns. So I thought before I left, I'd bring you your coffee. Would you like me to pour it? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I was sleeping so soundly. (laughs) As though I were in my tomb. Depressed, are you? Yeah. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you, dear. You'll perk up as soon as you get back to work. I suppose so. You always do. (laughs) I do, don't I? Always. Well, I really should be getting started. It's the dreadful hiatus between two books that gets me down. The feeling that it's all over, that my talent is all used up. I'll never write again. Never have another idea. You can't imagine how depressing it is. No, I guess I can't. Ah, You're lucky to be an accountant, John. Am I? Yes, I suppose. In some ways, I am. Speaking of which, I really better get going. Oh. Oh, will you answer that for me, will you, dear? All right. Hello? Is Miss Ormsby there? Uh, Yes. Yes, she's here. Or should I say, Mrs. Bates? Is this Mr. Bates? Yes, it is. This is Kathy Corrigan, Mr. Bates. Oh, yes. How are you, Miss Corrigan? Oh, you know... Could I speak with your wife? Well, can you can you hold on, Miss Corrigan, and I'll, I'll see if she's able to talk? I'll hold on. It's your agent, dear. So I gathered. Can you talk to her? I can try. Oh, uh, uh, don't go just yet, John. I, I need support. Well, it's... Um, hello, Kathy. I was just wondering uh, if you're working. No, no, I, I'm not working. When do you think you will be, Louise? Oh, for heaven's sake, Kathy. Don't you know anything about my habits after all these years? Well, I just thought... But I... you didn't. You didn't think at all. You know perfectly well I can't put a word on paper until the whole thing suddenly takes shape in my mind. 
Till that happens, I'm helpless as a baby. Well, when do you think something will take shape? Oh, how do I know? I can't plan to have it take shape, you know. I can't command it to take shape. I can't just trick it or, or seduce it or, or bribe it. I can't... All right, I... all right, Louise. I understand. Well, then why do you insist... I thought you might like to know that Anita Barlow has just been given a million-dollar advance... What? ...on her next book. Anita Barlow got a million-dollar advance? Yes, she did. Thanks for calling. How about that? How about that? That overdressed, overblown frump, that no talent, Benita Barlow has just... I know, a... I know, I heard. A million dollars. A million dollars. You're better than she is, Louise. You're much better than I she is. I know that I'm better. I know that. You're the best, Louise. I know I'm the best. But do those nincompoop publishers know it? No, all they know is Benita Barlow, Benita Barlow. So she gets all the advertising, she gets the interviews, she gets all the fanfare, all the whoop de do. I could kill that woman. Oh, now, darling, you don't mean that. I do mean it. I could kill her. Trouble is, <laughs> she's in England, and I'm here. Then, it happened. The idea for my next book sprang into my head, full-blown, the way it had always done before. Oh, oh, what a joy. What a relief. After months of sterility, I was ready to write again. In ten days, my public would have what they awaited so breathlessly. I could scarcely wait to tell John. It'll be all about a beautiful black woman and a white man and their enduring love for each other. Do we know any black women, Louise? Oh, that's beside the point. I can fantasize it. I can fantasize anything. Of course you can. I shall call it, uh, Dark Luster. Good title. All right, now, John, you know what you have to do. I must have ten full days to complete it. I shall shut myself in my room. Now, you know how it goes. We've been through this before. Yes, but Now, Louise... you will stay home. You'll have to cook your own meals. Well, that part's all now, right, you'll you... eat them by yourself. Yes, but you, you know... You'll sit by the window the way you always have to stop anyone who comes to the door. Now, you will have to hold the phone in your lap so you can answer it the second it starts to ring. Oh, and if that dog down the block starts to bark, you will silence it. And if the people next door play those awful records, you will make them stop. But, Louise... Oh, you... it will be heavenly... Shall I answer it? No. I'll take it. This one last time. The last call I take for ten delicious days. Hello? Louise, this is Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, the most beautiful thing has happened. Uh, Louise? I am starting a new book. You're the last person I'll speak to for ten whole days. Then you will have the completed manuscript. Louise, it's I'm going calling. to be called Dark Luster. Louise, and have you heard about Benita Barlow? Well, it's all about this. Louise, huh. Benita Barlow is very ill, very, very ill. Oh, uh, is she? It's a very rare disease and always fatal. She can't live long. Is that so? I just thought I should tell you. Well, good luck with the book. I'll be hearing from you in ten days, precisely. Benita Barlow's come down with some strange sort of disease. It's terminal. The news about Benita Barlow made hardly any impression on me at all. The concept for my new novel was burgeoning within me, and I could scarcely wait to begin again. I wrote feverishly. The words leapt onto the page. My fingers could barely keep up with the racing of my brain. For nine full days, I wrote, only taking time for an hour or two of sleep here and there now and then. And even as I slept, the words, the words, the blessed words ran pell-mell through my mind. Then, on the tenth day... Oh, stop. Stop. Look at the banging on that door. John! John, for pity's sake, will you make it stop? Is anybody home? John! John, will you make him go away? John, go to the door! John! What place? Is there someone home? Oh, who in the world?
world is that? You! You down there! You at the door when you go away! I, I just... You are doing a terrible thing! You are interrupting an act of creation! You are a dreadful, ignorant person! A desecrator, a vandal, a profaner on the altar of art! Look, you don't... dreadful man! You don't deserve to live! Slammed down the window, trembling with rage. That creep. That ignorant, selfish, stubborn creep. <laughs> I crawled into my big, comforting easy chair, <laughs> curled myself into a ball, and huddled there, cursing him and shivering as though I'd been smitten with a fever. I was exhausted, drained. After a while, I heard the outside door open. Who could it be but John? <laughs> My loyal, devoted husband, who had promised to defend me against such intrusions. Shaking with anger, I went downstairs. John was just coming in. And where? Where? If you will be so kind as to tell me. Have you been? Why, uh, at the office, Louise. At the office. Huh. At the office. While well, I was draining the blood from my veins to finish my novel, my masterpiece. While I was 40 pages from the ending, you were at the office. Well, there was so much work to do. Work? You call what you do work. Well, tax return. You know very well that for these ten days, your work was here. To silence the phone, to drive away callers, to keep that dog from barking, to make those people stop playing their dreadful rock and roll. Well, you know what you've done now, don't you? Louise. You have ruined my novel. That's what you've done. It's dead. It's finished. It's over. Please. I am going upstairs and tear it to shreds. Then, I shall burn it. Writers are indeed strange creatures, with strange habits of work. What suits one will not do for another. Some write longhand, others type. Some work early in the morning, others only late at night. Some pace the floor, others sit and meditate. Some compose rapidly, others with infinite slowness. Yes, writers are strange. Quite as strange as the rest of us. I'll be back shortly with that. Have you driven at night past houses lighted from within, perhaps brightly enough to make visible the figures of the inhabitants? Have you tried to imagine what they were doing, what they were saying or not saying, what they were feeling or not feeling? I wonder what you would have imagined had you seen the persons of John and Louise Bates as they confronted each other on a certain singular night. I'm John Bates, and I know I shouldn't have done what I did. But I got so bored, so unutterably bored, just sitting on the front window seat holding the phone in my hands, Listening for music from next door or the sound of a dog barking down the block. I wasn't away for more than a half hour. Maybe not that long. And when I returned, I let myself into the house as quietly as possible. And where? Where, if you will be so kind as to tell me, have you been? Why, at the office, Louise. While I was draining the blood from my veins. You were at the office. You know what you've done with your trip to the office, don't you? You've killed my novel. It's dead. It's finished. It's over. I am going upstairs and tear it to shreds. Then I shall burn it. Now, Louise, Louise, don't do that. Don't do anything while you're, while you're upset like this. Uh, now, tell me what happened. What happened was that some idiot came to the door and banged on it. Banged and banged and banged. I was 40 pages away from finishing my book. 
And this monstrous little man marched up our front steps and stood at our front door and banged on it. What did he want? How do I know what he wanted? To come into the house, I suppose. Well, you didn't let him in. Let him in. I opened the window and I shouted at him. I told him at the top of my voice that he was desecrating the temple of art, that he was an ignorant clod and a terrible man who shouldn't be allowed to live. Then I slammed down the window and I waited for you to show up. And now, now that it's too late, here you are. I'm sorry, Louise. Now, I'm going upstairs and destroy my novel. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, what did this man look like, the one who came to the door? Oh, how should I know? All I could see was the top of his head. No, oh, he had, uh, he had red hair, I remember that. Long red hair? Hmm, down to his shoulders, disgusting. Might have been Stephen Bennett. Who's Stephen Bennett? I do his income tax. Well, <laughs> I hope they soak him plenty. He destroyed my work. Now I am going upstairs. You want me to answer that? No, no, you're too late. I'll answer it. Yes? Hello? Oh, you. No, no, not well at all. Nothing's going well. No. Hmm? How's that? Oh. Well, thanks for telling me. Not that it matters, but thanks anyway. That was Kathy Corrigan. Oh? What did she want? Just to tell me Benita Barlow is dead. You know what, John? Maybe... I won't destroy my book after all. I lied to Louise when I said I went to the office. I didn't. I was with a girl. Yes, a girl. I'd been seeing her for quite a while. I felt guilty as hell about it, but I, I couldn't help myself. I'm in love with her, and I think she's in love with me. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Anyway, after Louise decided not to tear up her novel, I stayed around the house for a couple of days just to make sure that, you know, that she was all right. Then I went to see this girl. I had to. <laughs> Kathy, I don't know what's going on at home. With Louise, you mean? Of course, Louise. Louise is home to you, isn't she? Well, of course. I'm married to her. I see. Okay, go on. Kathy, when you called and told her that Benita Barlow was dead, she decided not to tear up her novel. Was she going to do that? Yes. I mean, you, you, you don't know about, uh, about Stephen Bennett, do you? Never heard of him. Well, he's a client of mine. It seems that he tried to see me in my office and I wasn't there because, you know... I... Because you were here. That's right. Stephen Bennett was trying to see me because he was worried about his taxes among other things. I mean, he'd given me some false figures and he was afraid that he was going to be found out and he wanted my help. Well, I wasn't at the office. So he went to my house. And Louise was almost finished with her novel. There was even an out-of-order sign above the doorbell. I mean, I put it there myself. So he started banging on the door. I mean, the man was really desperate. And Louise leaned out the window and she hollered at him. I mean, she told me all this herself. Called him an ignorant clod and a terrible man and, you know, stuff like that. And I guess he just finally gave up and went away. Yes. So? Kathy, it's in the paper this morning. Steve Bennett is dead. He took an overdose of something. And he's dead. Well, I'm sorry about that. But after all, he isn't it a close friend or anything like that. I know, but I mean, you know, if I'd been in my office... Or even at home where I was supposed to be. Maybe he wouldn't have done it. Oh, nonsense. I mean, I was here with you. Where you were or weren't has nothing to do with what happened. But it's my fault. Will you stop taking credit for something you couldn't help? You're just being arrogant. Arrogant? Me? It's... It's Louise. Louise? What about Louise? First Benita Barlow, now this Stephen Bennett. Both dead. But Louise didn't know either one of them. That doesn't mean a thing. Not when you have the... the capacity for evil. The evil eye. The what? I'm sure you've heard of it. The evil eye. I've heard of it, but I mean... I... Well, what is it, I mean? It is the power to destroy whatever stands in your way. Oh, no. 
know. I mean... Oh, yes. Yes. Kathy, you mean Louise can... You mean she can destroy people? Well, she has done it, hasn't she? On purpose? I don't know. I don't know precisely how it works. I wish I did. But what do I... I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm not sure. Let me think. I mean, what if she decides to destroy me? Or you? That is what I'm thinking about. Uh, look, John, you said she didn't destroy her books. Right after you called about Anita Barlow, she said maybe she wouldn't. You have got to insist that she finish it. And since? She must have felt such a great surge of power when she heard about Benita Barlow. Now, you tell her about Stephen Bennett. If we can direct all that psychic energy into her work, if she'll finish the book, who knows? Who knows what might happen? I can tell you, my head was in a whirl. My wife had the evil eye? Louise? Louise had the evil eye? The power to, to do away with people if she didn't like them, if they interfered with her? I mean, well, it just seemed absurd, impossible. Still, Benita Barlow and Stephen Bennett? I mean, it did seem so, you know, so odd and really horrible. But Kathy had said there might be hope if I could persuade Louise to finish her novel. Insist on it, she said. <laughs> Me insist. I've never insisted on anything in my whole life. Still, I could try. Louise, you, you didn't tear up your novel, did you? Not yet. Well, don't do it, Louise. It's mine to do with whatever I choose. No, no, now listen to me. I'd prefer not to discuss it, John, if you don't mind. But I uh, do mind. I, I think we have to talk about there's it. There's nothing to talk about. If my novel stays unfinished, it's your fault. Remember that. If you had stayed where you belonged and protected me from the outside world... I know that. I know that. ...for the ten full days, that novel would have been completed. But no, no. You had to run off to your stupid little office and that stupid little man... Stephen Bennett. ...whoever he was. He interrupted my concentration and he ruined the whole thing. He's dead, Louise. Oh? Is he? Yes. He took an overdose of something, and he's dead. Was he a, a friend of yours? Well, he was a client. You seem so obsessed. Well, he came here looking for well, me. if you had been here... If you had let him in... What are you getting at, John? Are you trying to tell me it's my fault the man overdosed himself? I don't think you know how, how powerful you are, Louise. I'm only powerful... If you're here to protect me. But I can't be here all the time. Well, no one's asking you to be here all the time. Ten days out of a whole year, you call that all the time? Please finish the book, Louise. I mean, if you don't... If I don't what? Well, you remember Benita Barlow. That English woman? What about her? She died. Oh, Anita Barlow died of some mysterious disease. I didn't know her. I've never even met her. Yeah, she was your rival. So what? Well, right here in this very room, I heard you say it. You said I could kill her. You said it twice, Louise. I was right here, right here with you when you said it. I could kill her, you said. That doesn't mean I did. How could I? It's impossible. Not, not if you have the evil eye. What's that? What is it? What's the evil eye? It, it, it's the power to hurt people. Just by wanting to hurt them. Even people you don't know. Even people who live thousands of miles away. You think that... That I have this power? I think... Maybe you have it. And I'm afraid of it, Louise. I couldn't tell whether I was making any impression on her or not. After all, I didn't really know what I was talking about. I just put words together and hoped that they would make sense. They sounded all right when I said them, but I couldn't tell what effect they were having on my wife. For her, her dark eyes opened wider and wider. Her cheeks got paler and paler. She walked out of the room without answering me. I waited downstairs, hoping to hear the sound of a typewriter, but I heard nothing. John? Yes, dear. Come in here, will you? Right away. 
Did you have a hard day? Well, you know, it's income tax time. Everybody's kind of anxious. Yes, that's what I am. Anxious. Terribly, terribly anxious. Agonizingly anxious. Well, Paralyzingly maybe... anxious. Maybe if you were to, you know, finish your book. I try. I try. I sit there in front of the typewriter and I stare at it. I sit and I stare. But I can't even put my fingers on the keys. I can't even lift my hands to put the paper in the roller. But I do try, John. Maybe it doesn't sound like it, but I do try. Really, I do. Really, I do. Believe me. You... You do believe me, don't you? Louise, if you would just say to yourself, I can do it. And I will do it. I can. I will. That's all you need. The power and the will. The power and the will. That's all. I could try again. Of course you could. Oh, by the way, Louise, coming home, I stopped to talk to the people down the block. You know, the one with the dog? Uh Uh-huh. He died. The dog died. The people said it was, you know, old age. He just lay down in the sun and he died. The dog died? Yes. And you know the couple next door, the ones with all that rock and roll all the time? They're getting a divorce. The second I stopped talking, Louise gave me a peculiar look. Then she got up and left the room. She went upstairs. I really didn't know what I'd said to make her do that, but a minute later, I heard something that made me not happy exactly, but very, very relieved. Do you remember what I quoted you towards the beginning of our show? The words of Blaise Pascal, evil is easy and has infinite forms. Think what has happened so far. And we've only presented two acts. A woman dies, a man dies, a dog dies, a marriage dies. What's left for Act Three? I'll be back shortly. If you tell me that you have never had the urge to destroy someone, I shall not believe you. The desire starts in each one of us at an early age. It resides in the tiny infant who, if his strength matched his fury could destroy the world. As it grows, the wish is modified, tamed, deflected. But it never really dies. I'm Kathy Corrigan, and I'm the best literary agent in the country. To begin with, I have impeccable taste. That's just for starters. Then I have terrific contacts, which I've cultivated over the years. And finally, I'm a super salesperson. That about sums it up, I think. Why I should have fallen for an insignificant little man like John Bates, I'll never know. But I had, and that's that. Every time the phone rang, I hoped desperately it would be John and not his frightful wife. Hello? Kathy, this is Louise. Oh, yes, Louise, how are you? Kathy, I have great news for you. Tell me, can't wait. I finished the novel. Louise, that's wonderful. I didn't think I could. Things have been so peculiar around here. Oh, what things? Oh, well, I, I don't have time to go into all that right now. Just, oh, things, you know. Well, they threw me off my stride for a while. But now I think I've got them linked. Well, when can I read the book? Well, I could bring it over to your office right now. Except that I am exhausted. Uh, couldn't you send someone for it? Why don't you ask John to bring it over? Oh, I don't know. I, I... don't have anybody to send. Well... John's really responsible for my finishing it, in a way. Although he's the one who kept me from finishing it weeks ago. Oh, I, I don't but know. But John's always so obliging, I'm sure. Oh, okay. I'll send John. Oh, Kathy, I can't wait till you read it. Neither can I. Tell John to hurry it up. Of course, I could have sent somebody. I could have sent my secretary. I could have hired a messenger. But I wanted to see John, and I wanted to see him right away. To find out how he had accomplished the miracle of making Louise finish her book. I couldn't concentrate on my work waiting for him to arrive. John. Hello, Kathy. 
girl said to go right in. Oh, uh, you got a kiss for me? You bet. Mm. Okay, now, I've got the manuscript. Right here. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the right way. <laughs> oh, sit down, John. Listen, I got a lot of work all piled up. Well, just for a minute. I want to know how you did it. You mean how I got Louise to finish the book? Of course, that's what I mean. Oh, it was easy. Well, how did you do it? It couldn't have been that easy. Well, after you told me about the evil eye, I got to thinking about it. And I told Louise that she had it. You didn't. Wasn't I supposed to? I mean, I, I, mean, I pointed out that Benita Barlow had died after Louise had said she could kill her. She did say that, you know. Yeah, go on. And, and, and Stephen Bennett, the man who came to the house and banged on the door, the one that she was so furious with, he died. Go on. Well, none of that made very much of an impression on her. Nothing did until I told her about the dog. The dog? What dog? The dog, the one down the block that barks sometimes. And I told her about the couple next door. What couple? The couple that play their rock and roll records so loud. They're getting a divorce. That all you did? That's about it. Listen, I better get back to work. John? Hmm? I love you. You know that. Do you, Kathy? Because I love you. Oh. Look, don't you think we ought to tell Louise? About us? She has a right to know. She's got to know something. No, 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 she doesn't. No, she hasn't. Believe me, she, she doesn't want to know. She wouldn't like knowing. She'd hate it. No, she mustn't know. It would be very bad if she knew. All right. All right, darling. It would be just terrible if she knew. You run along, sweetheart. And you tell Louise I'll call her as soon as I finish the novel. Poor John. So timid, so fearful. Afraid of everything and everybody. Frightened little mouse of a man. But I loved him. And he had accomplished the remarkable feat of persuading his wife to finish her book. A book on which I expected, along with her, to make a great deal of money. I stayed up half the night reading it. In the morning, I made a date with her for luncheon. Well, tell me... Tell me. It's great, isn't it? I tell you, Kathy, this is going to be the best yet. A smash. A blockbuster. Tell me, am I right? <laughs> of course I'm right. After all these years, Kathy, I know these things. This book is going to light up the sky. Uh, Louise. You did read it, didn't well, you? Of course I read it. You know I read it. Well, well. I stayed up half the night uh, reading it. I told you that on the phone. Well? What? Well, what? Am I right? He... No. No, Louise, you're not right, at least in my opinion. I am right. I'm always right about my own work. This is a great book. This is a great book. Louise, I was just giving you my opinion. Now, everybody's entitled to have an opinion, don't you agree? Not when it's the wrong opinion. Louise... How did you happen to finish it? John told me I could. Oh? He said, Louise, you have the power and the will. And I went upstairs and finished it. And that's all? Well, that was enough. After all, if I'd had the power and the will to do what I'd already done... And uh, what was that? Oh, never mind. The point is, I had it. I had the power and the will. He told me I had it, and I had it. <laughs> but of course, I, I'd known all along I had it, but nobody ever told me I had it. You see, then when he told me I had it, then I knew that I had it. All I needed was somebody to tell me I had it. Don't you see? I don't know that I do, Louise. <laughs> then I'm sorry for you. Really? Deeply, profoundly sorry. Really? Well, uh, let me tell you something, Louise. It is a cheap, trashy book. Cheap huh? and trashy. You. But not that all your you... books haven't been cheap and trashy, Louise, because they have been. But you believed in them so utterly something came through. People who read them came to believe that life could be sweet and wonderful and full of joy and love and light without pain, without suffering where goodness and sweetness were rewarded and meanness and cruelty were punished. Well, I believe that. Oh, yes. You're such a fool, I'm sure you do believe it. And because it's what everybody wants to believe, your books sell like crazy. Love conquers all. 
That's all your book says. That's all any of your books have ever said. Well, it's true. How would you know? What? What did you say? I said, how would you know about love? Well, I... I know all about it. Well, nobody could tell it from your books. They are sleazy and phony oh, and trumped, trumped up. Trumped up! some sex thrown in every 50 oh. pages just to show you're with it. And even those parts aren't very good. They're as phony and full of fakery as the rest of it. Right, you shut up. Just shut you up. asked me. I will never ask you again. You can bet on that. What's more, I'll make you eat your words, Kathy. You wait but and I see. I only said what I believe. What is it? What? <coughs> Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, what? Kathy, what is it? How <coughs> Kathy, do, do, do you want a glass of water? What can I do? Tell no. me. Oh, it's all right. Oh, it's all right. I was just... just joking on my words. You mean... You mean that I did that to you? I did it? You're a very powerful woman, Louise. Very, very powerful indeed. It was true. I hadn't taken a bite of food. We hadn't even ordered. But the power of Louise's hatred, her malevolence toward me, had brought on one of those helpless fits of coughing that till they stop, you think you're going to die. It was only when I realized, even as I was gasping for breath, that it was the evil eye of Louise Bates that was threatening my very life. It was only then I was able to stop. John, it was awful. Poor Kathy, poor baby. Oh, hold me close. I'm so frightened. Of course you are. I told her her novels were terrible. And I told her something worse. I told her she didn't know anything about love. Oh, boy, that was worse. But she doesn't know anything about love, not the way we know it. Look, I, I don't think it was a very good thing to tell her. Kathy, I think I, I, think I better be getting on home. Oh, must you? Well, I think I better... Uh, what was that? Somebody knocking at the door. Can't imagine who. Kathy? May I come in, please? It's Louise. I need to talk to you, Kathy. What do we do? Uh, uh, leave it to me. Come in, Louise. Thank you. Oh, John. Hello, Louise. I didn't expect to find you here, but maybe I should have. Maybe I've been stupid. Oh, no, Louise. I've been stupid about a lot of things, like I never knew till you told me, John, that I had the evil eye. But, Louise... When I think of what I've done, the power I've had, the power I've used, it's, it's awful to contemplate. Louise, don't think about it. You couldn't help it. But I must help it. I must learn to control it. Our, uh... Are you two in love with each other? Yes, we are. We are, yes. Well, then you have my blessing. I won't stand in your way. Louise, you mean that? With all my heart. I hope the two of you will be very happy. Thank you. And, uh, Kathy, you don't have to show my last novel to the publishers. If you don't want to. Oh, but I do. Well, it probably isn't very good anyway. Goodbye. And with that, Louise turned and walked out. Out of the room and out of our lives. What had happened, as near as I can figure out, is that she had been so shocked and horrified by the realization of her power that she had turned completely in the opposite direction and was determined to become a saint. It's John Bates again. And I'd like to add a few words. After all, I'm responsible for the whole thing. I was the one who taught Louise to say, I can and I will. Kathy and I are married now. And it's working out all right, I guess. But Kathy is a very powerful woman, too. And one of these days, I may have to say to myself, I can and I will. Then I'll go back to Louise, who has turned into a really very nice person. How things are turned about in this world. The cheater becomes the cheated. The robbed becomes the robber. 
a perpetrator becomes a victim. And no one is satisfied. At least, not for long. A very, very strange world indeed. But, alas, the only one we've got. I'll be back shortly. Let me read to you one more time from the works of Blaise Pascal. What a chimera is man. What a novelty. What a monster. What a chaos. What a contradiction. What a prodigy. Judge of all things. Feeble worm of the earth. Depository of truth. A sink of uncertainty and error. The glory and the shame of the universe. Our cast included Carol Titel, Mandel Kramer, and Terry Keene. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. That woman's not saying those words, Peter. Her lips aren't even moving. It's a trick. Shh, George, please. Limits there are now. As you climb the hilltop, when you reach the summit of your hill, you will find your dreams guarding the topmost peak. Oh, yes. Yes, Sir Walter. I shall. I shall. That's not Sir Walter Scott. George, please, I beg of you. The sun will set. The quietness and twilight will fall around you and your own. Your beloved Maud Evelyn will speak. It's a fake, Peter. Look at this wire in my hand. I pulled it out. There's someone in another room speaking into a microphone. It's a fire. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.